What's up YouTube, MexTech Guy here. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over a pretty common product nowadays. It's actually a soundbar by a company called a Kickchno. Now, if you're not familiar with what a soundbar is, it's essentially a way to amp up the audio that's coming out of your TV. Uh, and some of them offer subwoofers, some of them don't. Some of them is just a soundbar with just a lot of noise. Um, and so a Kickchno actually sent me this product and they wanted me to review it just to kind of give you guys my thoughts and uh, just honestly give you my honest opinion. So let's go ahead and jump into it and start the review. So right off the bat, out of the box, you get an optical cable, you get an RCA cable, you also get an aux cable, a power adapter to power the soundbar, some mounting screws if you want to mount it to the wall, a remote which also comes with batteries which is really nice, the manual and user guide, and of course the soundbar. So one thing that I do like about this soundbar is that it's pretty simple. There's really not much to it other than just the grill here at the front, which has the speakers behind it. And then to one side, you actually have all the controls, starting off with the power button, the volume, and also the pair key if you want to pair it via Bluetooth, as well as a headphone jack if you want to connect an inline uh, cable so that way you can listen to music directly. Uh, and on the back, you do have the ports so that way you have the power port and then you have the optical port as well and your old school left and right analog um, ports as well. The back of the soundboard does have the mounting holes for the mounting screws that came included in the box and just so the soundboard doesn't scratch at the wall they are cushioned which is really nice. Now the setup is really simple. You simply connect the soundboard to your TV using the optical cable that was included and then just plug in the power adapter into the wall. Some soundbars give you the option to use an aux cable to output sound from the TV, but I'm glad a Kixno didn't because I personally use the optical cable anyways, simply because you get a more immersive sound experience from the optical cable than you would from an aux cable. Once it is set up, you may have to change some settings on your TV to pick up that you want sound to come out of the soundboard instead of your TV, and once that's set, you're good to go. All right, so I've had the soundbar for roughly about two weeks now, uh, and I've messed with it for about a week, uh, and really kind of just dive down into it and just kind of see what it's like. Sound-wise, I'm gonna be honest, it sounds pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best soundbar that I've heard. Uh, to me, it definitely feels like there needs to be a little bit more bass, and it is missing it. Even though you have the ability to turn the bass up and down, I don't feel like it's up there yet. Uh, it definitely puts out a lot of volume, which I do like, but in terms of bass, you're definitely not gonna get that full frame, just bass uh, coming from it. One being it's just a soundbar and it doesn't have like a separate subwoofer that you can attach to it, uh, but it sounds pretty good overall. I think for the average person, this soundbar is definitely gonna enhance your TV sound, so it definitely makes a good buy because you're not going out there and spending four or $500 on a really nice surround system when this one can just amplify the sound that's coming from your TV. So overall, I think the soundbar for the price sounds really good I do recommend it but one thing you do want to keep in mind is that if you go out and purchase a soundbar don't expect a lot of bass but do expect a lot of volume which for some people like myself I really like and so I know that this video really doesn't do it any justice in terms of what the soundbar is going to sound like but just for kicks and giggles here's a little sample this phone for roughly a month at least um, and the reason I waited so long is because I wanted to really just get in depth with the phone and typically, you know, in the beginning when you first get a phone, hiccups don't really happen after. So the Akixno soundbar is actually 33 inches in length. It's a pretty long soundbar, uh, but behind the soundbar, there's actually four speakers behind this mesh grill right here. There's four speakers that make this soundbar. Uh, there's one, two, three, four in here, and each one of these speakers is 10 watts a piece, which outputs a volume experience of 40 watts. Now that is quite a bit, and it can fill a room, and it does fill my living room in terms of volume. And like I said before, it may not be the best when it comes to bass, but that's perfectly fine because of the amount of volume that this soundbar can output. Uh, to me, the aesthetics wise, it looks pretty good. It's all black, the mesh is all black, so it kind of blends in well with any setup, wherever you put it, it just looks very good. So props to that. So one thing about the soundbar that I do like is actually the remote. 
Uh, I know this is in the sound bar, but the remote actually has a nice little, almost like wood-like look to it. Obviously it's fake, it's kind of textured, but I mean, it looks really good in my opinion. All the buttons are actually really clicky, which I do like, I'm a pretty big fan of that. And every time you click on something, uh, well, the volume keys and stuff, you can definitely feel it. Uh, the actual different types of uh, options, like the line in or the optical or aux, they're a little bit mushy. Uh, but they press down really good and I'm a big fan of them. So in terms of features, this soundbar actually does feature Bluetooth capability. And so what that means is that you can actually pair your smartphone or your tablet to this soundbar and play music directly to it, either via Spotify, YouTube, or whatever you want. In addition to that, you also do have a line-in port and using the included cable that came with it, the aux cable, you can actually plug it in directly to here and to whatever device you choose and play music or, you know, again, whatever you want to it directly using that cable. So do I recommend this soundbar? I think I do. And that's honestly because this soundbar comes in at roughly $75. And I've put a link down below in the description. That way you can go directly to it if you want to check it out for yourself. All right, guys. So that wraps it up for today. If you liked the video, be sure to press that like button down below. And if you want to go ahead and subscribe so you can catch my latest video, be sure to press that button right here. I do have other videos you can watch, which are right here, here, and down here. So be sure to check those out. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.